Start the show we've got clash of the CLPs which involves two CLPs from different parts of the country taking on each other but also learning a lot about each other um, and our two CLPs today are Sedgefield in Durham and Camberwell and Peckham in in London so totally different CLPs and I'm um, going to start with um, Camberwell and Peckham CLP and they have a talented um, player of the trombone, Lucas, who is part of a collective group called Chainska Brassica. And I'm going to play Chainska Brassica's hit now. <laughs> Is it on? <laughs> yes. Hello, everyone. This is for Chain Scar a Brassica. Hey, 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 hey! Everybody inside the houses, in the kitchen, in the living room, in the dining room, in the bathroom, in the garden, in the lavatory. Everybody together, dancing, knees up, hey! Scar time, with James Scar. I've been looking at my life in the wrong way. I beat down on myself about the mess I made. is a trombone player um hello lucas can you hear me yes hi how are you doing uh great yeah you um you're doing a, a 10k um run is that the same time as you're on here uh, i just finished i did we managed to do 12k well it was a bit hot so potentially you've a just, bad idea you've just done a 10k run and now you've come on here um and uh so how did that video how did you get <laughs> yeah. together for the, the the video how did you do all that um yeah well basically we're we're a band that started in school we went to school in new cross um so we've known each other for like 10 years now we're all best mates um and obviously everyone's in quarantine and um we, being eight of us in the band it's not always easy to meet up and like coordinate ourselves we've actually had a record number of meetings since quarantine began <laughs> which is quite yeah. ironic but we just wanted to do something that would uh, keep the musical like juices flowing and can involve like our friends and family. So we got people to send in a video of them dancing along to to the tune, and then made like a compilation, um, yeah, and recording from that. So yeah, that's that's kind of. So how, how did you get all the instruments to play together? You just kind of sent a, a, a mix tape around or something. Mix. Yeah, like we've all kind of got various like home studios that we kind of make music from. So we kind of made a demo track 
and then did the drums, bass, guitar, trumpet, sax, trombone, and then the vocals on top with some percussion. So yeah, it was good. It's oh. actually sounds sounds uh, it sounds pretty good for a like home recording. So yeah, we were it's happy. Great. With you've that. got quite a, you've got quite a few views on there already. We're going to push that out now, so you get to be a an internet um, sensation. Thank you so much, guys, for the time. Um, if anyone wants to follow the band, that's the name's Chainscar. It's like this sticker here. Um, so yeah, um, big love and keep up the good work. Thank you, thank you, Lucas. Cheers. Thank you very much. Cheers. And uh, we're now going to hear from the contact in Peckham, who's uh, Kim, who isn't able to attend today um, because she's um, quite poignant that You're she's right, not able to, to come along today because uh, this is where video. Hi, Campbell. Hi, Sedgefield. Um, I'm really sad that I can't be with you today because I'm a huge fan of Stand Up For Labour and Stay Home For Labour. Uh, but right now I'm on a, a memorial service online for my father-in-law who died three weeks ago of coronavirus. Um, he, I'm a Corbyn supporting Remainer and he was a right wing uh, Brexiteer so you can imagine the ding-dongs that we had but uh, he was always very good-natured and gracious and always forgave my rantings uh, and I'm really going to miss him. So anyway, have a good time today, and um, I'm not really competitive, but come on, Camberwell. Yeah, so, so um, uh, Kim wasn't able to attend uh, today because of, of her relative dying, and, and it shows really why we're all here, so it's quite poignant. Um, but I, I did want to sort of bring a bit more optimism and cheer, because uh, we've, got, um, we've got Nicole here, Who's uh, who's just um, got some recent good news, haven't you, Nicole? Uh, yeah, hi everyone. Um, so three weeks ago today, we had a lockdown baby. Fantastic. Um, and I would I would show him to you, but we've just got him off to sleep. Um, oh. He is real. I can. I, I'm glad that he's not making himself present on this call. Um, but yeah, so yeah, not not what we expected um, when we got pregnant uh, nine months ago. But um, yeah. Here he is, and he's well and healthy. And how was how was the experience of of giving birth during lockdown? Um, it you know actually I've had a very positive experience. It's obviously a, a bit unnerving. We weren't sure what was going to happen. We weren't sure really what the state, I guess, of the NHS was going to be in terms of um, the care we would be provided with. But I mean, obviously, as everyone will have experienced with the NHS, um, the care is never in doubt. Um, and the experience was good. Fortunately, my partner could be there, which was a, a fear if one of us had caught it um, that I might have to give birth alone. But um, fortunately, we were both together. Um, I stayed in hospital for a few days after and um, that was difficult, I've got to be honest. And it really made me feel for, um, I guess, anyone who's in hospital at the moment, whether it's with COVID or, or anything else, not being able to see their relatives um, and get that, I guess, that extra care and support you need when you're recovering from something. Um, and I really felt for the NHS staff um, who already, you know, we already know they're flat out. And then also not being able to have those extra people around giving support to the patients, meaning the burden was placed on them instead. Um, so, you know, even just getting me a glass of water or, you know, helping me pick up the baby those are things that your partner would usually help you with um, or a relative and that burden is also falling on the staff so yeah it, i mean yeah it was it was amazing i had yeah i've got huge respect for everyone working there everyone was really lovely and i mean it was also in some ways it was something really nice we were sheltered from the experience of everything that's going on in the real world for three days we you know we were living life just in this bubble within hospital um and you know, but yeah, the virus was the last thing on my mind um, for those few days. So, so I mean, it must have been really full of fear before going in, knowing about the the virus and stuff. So, it sounds like you were given enough confidence and sh assured by the hospital staff that you could do all this, and and you look quite well for how many weeks is it three weeks? <laughs> three about? weeks, yeah. I three. mean, um, yeah. I, ahead of time, I had a really good midwife who sort of explained what was going to be available obviously a lot of things have been stripped back so in terms of birth choices which you hear about you know being this really empowering thing none of those were available to us so we knew we had this very limited option and it would be sort of you know route one 
you know, having a baby. Um, but I think, I don't know, I, you know, I was in some sort of hormonal pregnancy bubble, so I just didn't try and stress out about it. You know, there was nothing we could do. Like, as with all of us in this lockdown situation, we are powerless. We're just following the rules. We're just trying to get through it. Um, and that was how I approached, yeah, and we approached, yeah, going into hospital as well. Um, but yeah, like I said, it, it, yeah, when you're in there, it felt like you were a complete world away from the virus. I mean, obviously, apart from all the staff wearing masks and feeling very uncomfortable in, you know, this new protective gear that they weren't used to wearing. Um, yeah, it, 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 yeah, you, I didn't really feel like, it. yeah, I felt I was completely protected from everything. And what's your your son's name? Oh, well, another Lucas from, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, born in Camberwell. Um, yeah, so Lucas is his name. So maybe he'll play the trombone later on as well. Yeah, maybe. Well, yeah, we've got high hopes for him. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, Nicole, for joining us. And I hope you get a lot more sleep uh, as, it, as the weeks go on. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Rob, are you, Bob, are you there? Hey, I'm here. Um, you're the LGBT officer for Campbell and Peckham, is that correct? That's correct, yeah. Um, that's not a quiz. That's not a quiz question. <laughs> it's just not, I'm just, I'm just uh, checking that uh, everything's right and I haven't got the, the wrong Rob. Um, so what have you, you've been doing some fundraising uh, during this lockdown. Uh, could you tell us what, what you've been up to? Yeah, sure. So um, I work for NHS Blood and Transplant. On the side, I do a bit of DJing at the Royal Vauxhall Tavern. And I also do a bit of freelance writing. So I, I really like to keep busy. Um, but the, the freelance writing, I specifically write for the Independent on the Eurovision Song Contest each year. And um, probably about half an hour ago, I should have stepped off the train in Rotterdam for what would have been uh, this year's Eurovision Song Contest. So absolutely gutted that's been cancelled but um it got me to thinking about the things that i enjoy about eurovision and it's not necessarily the competitive element but like the camaraderie and the fun and the friendship and the, the campery as well i absolutely love it and i thought well it would be nice to do um it's called a simulcast i'd never heard that word before until a few weeks ago but i put on twitter like, would anyone like to join me watching an old episode of the contest and we can tweet along together using the same hashtag, thinking that like, oh, you know, 20 people would do that. And it's, um, it's just gone bananas. There's like, um, it's trending on a Saturday night now above shows like Britain's Got Talent, which is, it's just absolutely crackers. And on, on top of that, I wanted to see if we could raise a bit of money for some charities. And so um, there's three very uh, great charities that are close to my heart. Firstly, Mermaids, which is doing some really good work with young trans and non-binary people and their families, um, which they're having a real time of it at the moment, particularly in lockdown when, you know, there are some awful situations that some people can get into and they can't get away from it. But also the Terence Higgins Trust in Stonewall. And so I thought if we set a target at like 500 quid, that would be good. And I think over three weeks, we're now on 12,600 pounds. Um, so I'm, I'm just over the moon because, you know, charities at the moment, a few quid here and there makes the difference between, um, a service going ahead or being canceled or postponed. So, um, it's just great. And if anyone likes Eurovision, you can tune in 8 PM on Twitter, uh, using the hashtag Eurovision again. Um, and it's a really good one this evening. Oh, well, thank you, Rob. It's really good to see you <laughs> and, and well done with what you've done. I can't believe how much uh, you, you, you got out of that with the money and, and the attention and the and bigger than Britain's Got Talent. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. That's the future. You'll be on, you'll be doing, you'll be Simon Cowell next. Uh, I don't think I've got the trousers for it, but thank you. Oh, uh, okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Uh, and Will, are you there? Hello. Um, you've been, um, You've been starting up an, an, another initiative during lockdown called COVID Forums. Yeah, I, I can't take credit for the name. That was our branch secretary, Jenny Turner. The COVID Forums um, was, um, it's quite a grand name. And um, uh, to give you an idea of my ambitions, I thought we would hold 100 people. You know, so I was thinking, get a business account, you know, but... Um, uh, that's stand up for Labour numbers, isn't it? So uh, maybe it's my delusions of grandeur. But we did have a great turnout for our first meeting. Uh, 60 people signed up, um, close to 50 turned up. And, um, and I think it was just a great chance for us as, a, you know, with party business officially suspended, 
um, to, to, to hear about the NHS, obviously a, an issue that's really at the forefront now, uh, from people who are uh, working on the front lines and not through our rather derelict media. And, um, and we got to really think about together, um, which is an important thing, um, what our position is as Labour Party members. So we got, uh, it was a really good meeting in the end. Yeah, we were very pleased with it. So this goes across the country, you've got not just in your CLP. I'd love it to, yeah. Well, I was. I, I hope it's. I don't see why it should be restricted to CLPs. I think that CLPs should um, should have a think about doing things which involve other CLPs, like uh, like you're doing today. So it's great to see lots of members from Sedgefield, and maybe uh, Sedgefield would like to uh, come to our next meeting, which is uh, uh, next Thursday. It's coming Thursday on social care. So it's going to be meeting COVID forum number two. Um, we've got uh, some great speakers lined up, and hopefully we'll be able to talk through. Some of those really important issues oh that's great and um th th that's because i i did a, a show in in um peckham uh, before christmas that was a bit <laughs> downbeat because of the election just having happened but yeah. there was a suggestion made in that show that clp should twin to help um in the especially the seats in the north that labor has to win so if peckham mm. Because you've got a massive membership, haven't you? I mean, how many people in, in Campbell and Peckham? Coming, coming up close to 4,000. 4,000? Wow. Yeah, I thought like it was 2,000. Wow. It's, uh, I think it's, it's over 3,000, for sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's great. Uh, thank you for, for joining us. And um, Hazel, are you there? Yeah. Hold on. Uh, yeah, I am. And so t tell us what you've been up to during lockdown. Oh, can't hear you. Yeah, uh, can you hear me? I can now, yeah. Yeah, so I've, in lockdown, I've been um, just been thinking about what things I got up to in my life. Um, and I'm a, I go travel a lot. Um, and of course, I can't travel at the moment. So I was looking at some of the stuff that I have got from my travels, but also um, that some friends of mine brought back. And one of the things that they brought back for me was this. Can you see this? Oh, this is my set, my set Russian of Russian doll. dolls. Um, now, the first, I just want to take you through this little by little because it is quite entertaining. So those of you who might know your Russian history know who this is, Lenin. So when I got this, I was very excited and thought, um, and I've been playing with these for the last two weeks, by the way, it's very sad. It put them in and out of this proper because it does actually come apart. Um, if I could do it, well, I can't now. But anyway, so I'm very excited about this, thinking, great, who's going to be after Lenin? Can you guess? Who was uh, after Lenin? Stalin. Yep. <laughs> so we now have Joe, <laughs> you know, the most horrendous um, leader probably ever, the people he killed in Russia. He's next. So I thought that was interesting. Then I'm thinking, what am I going to do? Who will be after that? So then this, who's this, is next. Can you see Gorbachev. him? Gorbachev. So why have we suddenly jumped to Gorbachev? Because we've missed out quite a number of Russian presidents, but hey, Gorbachev. And um, for those of you who remember Gorbachev, um, Glasnost, remember Glasnost? Um, opening up Russia and all the rest of it. Then we jump to... Oh, is that Putin? No, that's Yeltsin. Is that's it? Boris oh. Yeltsin. Oh, yeah. First, first Russian president to go into Chechnya. First Chechen war. Um, and as you can see, uh, bizarrely, again, why him? But anyway, and then finally, last but not least, Putin. Yeah, it's um, Putin. Putin. Yeah. Now, obviously, this is the tiniest one, and it isn't anywhere near as big as the lovely Mr. Putin's ego, but I suspect it might be the size of something else that he has, um, which turns him into the egotist that he is. So that's what I've been doing in lockdown, is entertaining myself with my mad Russian dolls <laughs> and fantasising about the fact that who in, in the Russian tourist industry sat there and thought, oh, who should we put in the dolls? Let's put Stalin in. Let's put a Gorbachev in. And what about the rest of them? So completely bizarre, but something that's entertained me. Yeah, I thought Brezhnev I could have done with it because he had those he eyebrows. The eyebrows. Yes, that would have been a good, good. one. Yeah. No, Brezhnev would have been good. Who else? Anybody else? Can anyone remember anyone else? Khrushchev. Yeah, there's Ch Chernchenko. Oh, yeah, Andropov. I'm reading off the list here. Yeah, Brezhnev would have been quite good, wouldn't he? Khrushchev. There's yeah. loads of them. So I have this, this fantasy in my head that these Russians were sitting there in there you, trying to plan it. Can you do one of Labour heroes for us next? Can you do one starting off with Big, <laughs> big Keir <laughs> Hardy, Big yeah. Keir Hardy, and then, and then a slimline Jeremy Corbyn at the end? Yeah? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Maybe we should make one and sell them. But quite seriously, the, the Lenny I've, I've, one. I've is got just... that on recording, so if you do do it, I've copyrighted the. Right, you're copywriting idea. it, are you? Right. Yeah. So yeah. Lenny says hello. All right, thank you, Hazel. Um, uh, and I'm going to speak to Dave. Oh no, I've done the wrong thing. Oh well, bear with me. Uh, Dave. Yes. Good to see you again. I can only see the top of your head. If, if, Not really. If you, there, that's better, yeah. Um, so you are the secretary of the 4,000 strong Camberwell and Peckham CLP. 3,800-ish, actually, yeah. I, uh, well, you have to keep your tabs on that number, don't you, as a secretary. Uh, yeah. Uh, and um, uh, so what's your lockdown story? Um, well, just firstly, it's quite difficult following Lucas and Nicole's brilliant story and then, you know, following up with the relics that is Dave Lewis representing the leadership of the, of the CLP. There you go. Um, I, <clears throat> um, although I'm the secretary of the CLP, in the previous life, if any of you have seen the film Pride, I was one of the uh, original activists in the film. Uh, sorry, in the group that the film is structured around, which is called Lesbians and Gay Sport Minors, uh, from the 84-85 miners' strike. Um, so uh, we've been spending a little bit of time working on cataloguing and archiving all of our uh, archive material and then digitising it for our website. And if I can do a little shameless plug, Chris, right. don't mind. We've got a website, www.lgsm.org please visit and we've got a Twitter account 17 and a half thousand people follow us at LGSM pride if you fancy doing that as far as on a personal level um, my partner and I have unleashed the inner hairdresser we've been cutting each other's hair I knew that there was an inner hairdresser in there somewhere but it's taken a crisis like this to um, to bring that out um, and revelation number two for me really is that now I'm at home much more than I would normally be. I'm not, I'm no longer a creature of routine. So I'm ironing at two o'clock in the afternoon. Whereas I, it appears that I was always doing it ironing previously when the cat was awake, when the cat was asleep somewhere. And the cat's frightened of the ironing board. That's one thing I've discovered. He thinks it's something that I'm going to hit him with basically. Um, that's it, really, Crispin. Well, uh, it's great to see you again. And um, so, what, is, is Harriet Harman, uh, is, is she a, a hands on MP there? I mean, I, I know she's your, your MP. So, do you, do you do a lot of stuff with Harriet Harman? Um, she, well, she does regular reports at our meetings. Obviously, Harriet's quite a high profile um, uh, member of parliament, really. She's been around since um, 1982, so that's nearly 40 years. People recognise her when she when she joins us on campaigning activities. They do recognise her, and sometimes you can see from the expressions on their faces that they don't know whether they recognise her from EastEnders Gogglebox or something else. And you can see that whole thought process going on. It is very entertaining. Um, she's the longest-serving woman MP, current woman MP in in Westminster at the moment, which allows her to be bestowed the title of Mother of the House, and she seems to quite like that. Um, I suppose it is a bit of a bonus that we've got a high-profile high um, uh, MP because she is recognisable. Um, nearly lost her last year because she threw a hat into the ring for the uh, replacement speaker's role for um, John Burkow when he stood down. Um, I think most people on here are going to know that um, when somebody is elected to the role of speaker, they resign their party whip and become effectively impartial. But the thing that worried us a lot, really, was the fact that we were going to lose an MP. Really, there would be no political voice right. in Westminster for Campbell and Peckham. But Harriet's misfortune is our fortune because she, her vote went down in the second round of votes from the first time so she then withdrew we've still got a, a Labour MP um, so you were wishing that she didn't win that that vote you're actually willing her to lose the, the... I couldn't possibly comment on that Chris right. okay well I, I better move on I, I've just seen the time and it's uh, 
yeah, it's 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 great to see you again. I uh, enjoyed meeting you in in the in the gig before Christmas. Uh, so I'm going to talk to. Um, we're going to we're going to move on now to uh, to our other CLP that we're focusing on, which is um, Sedgefield, uh, which was the seat that Tony Blair was MP for for I think about twenty odd years, um, and they just recently lost uh, in the general election. They lost the seat to the Tories. To start off for for Sedgefield CLP, uh, we've got music from In Evil Hour, which is a punk band um, who are doing an acoustic version of a, of a punk song. So I, I'm really looking forward to this. If you like punk, uh, this is a different way of doing it and Sedgefield is showing the way. So this is In Evil Hour. Hello, we're Gara and Alice from In Evil Hour um, and we're here with one of our favorite songs by, by a band called Ignite. This is Live For Better Days. Say it for tomorrow And we thought with you being Labour members, you'd probably be depressed enough already. <laughs> hi, hi, Gareth. Hi. I'm um, sorry, I, I didn't catch your the sing, singer's name. Sorry. It's Alice. Hello. Alice. Oh, sorry, Alice. Uh, Alice and Gareth. So, um, you uh, are a punk band in, yeah. and is there a big following for punk in in the northeast? Um, uh, <laughs> we do, I mean, we do all right. All right. I mean, punk, punk itself, I think, talking nationally, it's quite a small scene anyway. Um, but yeah, we, we do all right up here. Um, yeah. Yeah. And your, your other songs are depressing, as you said. Is, is that is that because well, they're... We about, focus a lot on, well, yeah, yeah like a lot of our themes are... You know, the climate crisis and, you know, workers' rights and things like that. And it's, it's not too many hopeful things about that at the moment especially under the current administration so yeah yeah well yeah but you've got a good audience here the labor labor supporters will all be will be clapping along with those, those issues oh, yeah. Um, yeah well we uh, we have to admit as well we've been co-opted in by sedgefield because we are actually uh darlington clp members which is You're darlington oh yeah yeah so well, I'm sorry, but we have to end this 
conversation right <laughs> now. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, only, I'm, only, I'm only joking, but we, we do have to end it actually quite now because I'm running really late. But um, thank you very much for sending that in. And uh, it's good to see that there's a lot of solidarity between CLPs up there. I better have a word with, um, with Paul. Are you there, Paul? Yeah, I'm here. So you're, you're, you're getting in other CLPs to help Sedgefield. Is this, is this what's going on up there? Is Sedgefield, um, d d have you got resources up there? I've heard actually that you, you are struggling up in Sedgefield with oh, lack of resources. We have, to get, we have to get ringers in sometimes. No, what, what it is is um, in Sedgefield and the neighbouring CLPs, we get on really, really well with one another and we try and share everything we do, you know, so the, the borders of CLPs don't necessarily mean exactly what they might mean you know so you might I, i'm closer to easington clp geographically than i am most of sedgefield so we all kind of help one another out and we thought like we are red wall seats um you know darlington went sedgefield went north northwest durham went um and mm -hmm. bishop auckland went and we're all trying to sort of work together to try and win back those seats we're pulling putting our resources together because um you know there's only Bishop Auckland have a premises and they've offered maybe to um, collaborate with us to, to get a premises. But if we got a premises, then we would need to maybe fund um, someone to work there and actually be effective in that red wall. So we really are trying to appeal for a, a bit more resources uh, in, the, in the area in general. That's terrible. So um, do, you, do you think that that's a, a reason that, the, the, the seats were lost in a way that there wasn't there weren't enough resources. You didn't have enough uh, money or, or offices and people. I'm not I'm not sure whether that was the it certainly wasn't the only reason. No, no, not the only. Um, but it didn't help. We were taken for granted. Our our campaigns were taken for granted. We've been working hard for quite a while because we saw this coming. We saw um, with the challenges we face around Brexit. We've got a lot of people who voted to leave the EU around here. And um, with our MP being really high profile, the Kyle Wilson bill, um, which, which sought really to keep us in the EU, um, a lot of people lost a lot of faith in, in what he was doing and whether he was able to deliver what they voted for. And it's, it's a mixed picture, you know, there, there are a lot of things that caused a lot of problems in our CLP, but we did see it coming and uh, we were, you know, under-resourced. Um, we try to raise money for the CLP, but it's really difficult when, you know, we had a, a we had a parallel organisation running within our CLP from the MP's office where he would raise money um, for himself for the campaign and not run it through the Labour Party accounts, and it made made it very very difficult that we weren't working together. Um, so you know, but we have been trying. So well, thank thank you for taking part as well because you're the main. Uh, the main man for getting this together and and bringing in people from Darlington uh, and other CLPs to do your um, bidding. But anyway, um, thank you. I'm going to talk now to uh, one of your members, uh, hopefully from Sedgefield, uh, Mike Dixon. Um, yeah. Mike, sorry, Mike and Mary. Mary, I want to speak to you, Mary. Yeah. Actually, um, Mary, you were you were a Labour member during um, the time, uh, thanks Mike for leaving, but anyway, um, Mary, you were um, a Labour member when Tony Blair became MP for Sedgefield, is that right? Well, it, it was a little later than that. I was, I was a member of Sedgefield when he became Prime Minister. Uh, we, we were with Derek Foster in the beginning and then Bishop Auckland went in with Sedgefield, but we were there for a while before the election in 1997. And so I was around, I was there, when Tony Blair became Prime Minister. And what was your, how have you, what's your feelings about Tony Blair as, as, as time's gone on? Because obviously he was Prime Minister. How, how do you feel about him now that obviously he's not, well, not I, Labour leader? Well, in, in the beginning, in the beginning, I thought he was magnificent. I thought he, he did a wonderful job after he took the reins when John Smith died and he had a young family and I was very, very proud of him. He, uh, he took over, he had many things to do in the first six years. In the first year, Princess Diana died and he had to handle the Queen. Uh, he had foot and mouth, he had many, many things to do. And I was very, very proud of him. I thought he was a wonderful statesman. And for the first six years, I, I thought he was magnificent. Uh, of course, then there was the war and you know many things happened after that. But the last six years, 
I have changed completely towards them. Um, when uh, Jeremy Corbyn took over, uh, I, I feel that he's done everything possible to undermine, not just undermine him, but he was, you know, bitter about him. And I feel he was, you know, I feel he was partly responsible for our come down. And uh, I think Jeremy Corbyn's a, a wonderful man. Uh, and uh, and Tony Blair, I'm very, I'm bitterly, bitterly disappointed in in him. You know, I have changed completely towards him from being very proud, I thought he was magnificent, to being bitterly disappointed. Yeah. And um, I and your your partner uh, Mike. Yeah. Um, I hear that your opinion isn't isn't much more isn't higher than that. Is that is that correct? No, no. That's, I agree. I agree with what Mary says. I mean, we're all. I wasn't living in the constituency then, but I was. You know, when we got elected in 1997, it was great. But then, I think it's an example of how power corrupts, and uh, how after the war. And how we were manipulated, and he more or less uh, was all uh, everything was orderly and prearranged. Everything in the Labour Party was sort of uh, you weren't allowed to dissent. It became uh, uh, top down, uh, and I'm afraid the war and his present search for money, as it would seem to be, is sort of corrupt. It seems corruptness to us, and his interference in the Labour Party. I mean, at least Gordon Brown has kept his his distance and more thoughtful, but his influ influence and in trying to influence the Labour Party has been disastrous. And I think that's part of the reason here. I mean, the reason here, 20,000 people, over 20,000 people voted to leave Europe. And the MP had no message for them, except trust me and we're going to get back in, which obviously the 20,000 people I'm going to vote for him, you know. Right. So it's and on the door, you know, people. Think, I mean, Keir Starr was talking about on the doorstep. People said on the doorstep what they wanted to hear. They heard the MP had said that uh, you know Jeremy Corbyn was a problem. So when they knocked on the door, so it's Jeremy Corbyn. But underneath it, there was an underlying trend that uh, we voted to leave. And the Labour Party has abandoned that. So you know, on this on the doorstep stuff doesn't resonate. Right. It's irrelevant. I'm going to move on to, thank you both for taking part in this discussion. Uh, yeah. I'm going to talk to, um, to Chris and Andrew, um, who are another Sedgefield couple. Are you, are you there, Chris? Yeah, dear, yeah. yes. Um, so tell us about the, the problems you had with the last election, because I believe that, uh, as Paul was saying earlier, there was a kind of, th this, there was this disjointed campaign between the CLP and the um, candidate, the parliamentary candidate. What, what's, what, what was the experience there? What happened? Well, do you want to go? Yeah, do you want to? Um, I think it started in 2017. Um, Phil put out some campaign material that was heavily critical of Jeremy. Um, and it backlashed. Uh, a group of people got together and they took over every position on the CLP. And all of these new Labour cronies got kicked out they went into touch um, so they got together and formed a limited company with the MP to run these events um, probably the worst of which was an evening with Tony Blair I mean talk about things eating themselves um, but they raised a lot of money uh, but none of it went to the party they kept it all and come December when it came for the election again they basically told the CLP, he'd stopped talking to the CLP by then, he hadn't been to meetings for over a year. Um, he told the CLP, we don't want your money, we're going to use our money, we don't want your people, we don't want your ideas, we are going to run this election ourselves with his own little group of people who are also his company directors. Uh, so basically, it was like an independent campaign, but with Labour branding. Um, but they wouldn't campaign in the dark, and they wouldn't campaign in the rain, this is in December. Uh, and I was told by one person, he, he was about as welcome on the doorstep as a bailiff. <laughs> they really did not like him. Um, and the upshot of it was, we lost by 18%. And I know nationally we lost by, we lost 8% of the vote, but was 18% in Sedgefield, and that 10% was entirely down, I think, to the arrogance of Phil Wilson. And the, very, the day after, 
it was all, oh, it's all Jeremy Corbyn's fault. It took right. more responsibility for it at all. And the majority of those people who were running his campaign quit the party the day after, left, they were gone. So they'd done all the damage and then that was it. They were well, it, it sounds really bad what was happening up there. I mean, the, 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 the MP not helping the, the CLP or the CLP, just not wanting to know, it just doesn't make sense to me. Um, I'm really, we're really running late, so I'm, I'm going to have to move on. Sorry about that, Chris. We'll, we'll get back to you. when you, if, if, if Sedgefield win, then you'll be in the next round. We'll hear more about it. <laughs> OK. When we will. Sedgefield win. <laughs> when Sedgefield win. Um, Stuart. How are you doing? How are you doing? You, you, I've heard that you've been keeping in touch with members all the way through lockdown. So that uh -huh. nobody is not, um, well, not, nobody feels isolated, effectively. Yeah, well, uh, I'm I'm core membership officer, so it's kind of my, my position anyway to contact members. But what I've done is really expanded that to just checking in on people in the party to make sure they're okay and they've got you know a need sorted. Because lots of people in the party uh, get out to branch meetings, and that's about it, you know. And they've kind of lost that link. So phone calls and just a little bit of contact's been really good. And people have really responded well to it. Uh, it's it's really I never I haven't heard of that in my CLP. So it's really good uh, thing that you're doing there. And um and and also I've heard from other members in in Sedgefield that are, are helping others uh, in different constituencies across towns. Um, is is um is Harley here? Is Harley? Yeah, Harley, are you there? I'm there, Crispin. How are you doing, my man? I'm good. Um, so tell us what you've been up to helping people from other towns. Uh, yes, so um, we started up um, the local uh, COVID mutual aid group and what have you. And I know uh, ourselves, Sedgefield, and even Northwest Durban, we've kind of crossed paths on a number of occasions where, uh, I mean, we've got a couple of initiatives going on here. So we've got Couples for Carers, where the public will donate money into a PayPal public account. And then we'll send someone round with a delivery uh, of teas, coffees, biscuits for local care homes, hospitals and what have you. We've done deliveries to um, care homes within the Sedgefield constituency, within our own, within Crook, within North West Durham. So we've had a lot of sort of interconnectivity there in terms of some of our initiatives. Um, you know, there's been lots of support that we've been given, you know, across, across the boundaries, as uh, Paul said beforehand as well. Oh, that's fantastic, and and um, I'm really pleased to hear that uh, the CLP uh, has picked itself up after after what happened in December, and just getting out there and doing things and um, and working with other um, neighbouring um, constituencies. It's 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 it's, it's really heartwarming. Yeah, I um, mean, no, we, I'm sorry. Go on, no, carry on. No, because I mean, we lost our MP as well, uh, Helen Goodman. So we, we had a complete wipeout up the north here. And, um, you know, we went to Sedgefield. Now, I was quite surprised when we went to Sedgefield, even during our campaign. Um, they've offered us a lot of support in the past. So it was only, and even during that campaign, so it was only right that we helped them. Um, I brought the bagpipes out and we had a bit of a, uh, a Christmas jingle up in one of the local marketplaces in Newton Aircliffe. And, um, you know, there was a lot of us stood round. And I said to, I said, I remember saying to Paul, like, Paul, why don't, you know, we've got a lot of people stood round here. Let's go do some campaigning. And um, he said, we can't. The, um, we can't, well, the con information on contact creator, um, the, the database that we use for the electoral uh, register, that'll be out of date because the MP is getting all this information, not actually putting it on the system. And we don't know where he's going to be. We don't know where he's at. And I was like, what? The, uh, how is this even happening? Um, it was really surprising. Whereas, you know, I know, you know, our MP, um, she was a bit like mom, mate. You either loved her or hate her. You know, she was, um, some might have considered her just like uh, Phil in some ways, but she was still very much a case of, well, no, we, we need as much help as we can get. So to say those two contrasting um, situations, you know, our CLP, we're not a paragon at all of any sort of circumstance. But, you know, one of the things that I'm proud to say is, is that the left and the right of the party will come together regardless of the circumstance, if it has to, especially. And, um, you know, it was kind of alien just to, just to you know, say, well, we can't do it. We, he's not letting us do it. And I was like, this is absolutely unreal. But, I mean, 
Sedgefield have done some remarkable work. They elected um, before the general election. They've got a uh, councillor in, John Higgins, I think it was, for Wingate. Um, so we've got a Labour win there. And, you know, we've had a very good close connection um, in, you know, the Labour Party and the Labour left in the area. So, you know, great here to be representing Sedgefield from Bishop Auckland. Oh, that's great to hear. Thank you, Harley. Um, Neighbour Heroes quiz. Hurry up. And Mike is being called yeah, we are. by Mary. Oh, I'm here. Called by Mary. And I am looking for uh, Jeremy from. Is Jeremy yeah. there from. Campbell? Yes, I'm here. Jeremy, thank you very much for waiting. I appreciate this. Uh, I saw you did a little hand up. I was wondering if it was you saying I'm off. Um, <laughs> But it's good that you Jeremy. stayed because it because because we've got a really good quiz coming up. Uh, you were the winner of the yeah, sure. quiz in, well, no, in Tampa, weren't you? In Peckham, I, I was. I got Arthur Henderson. You got Arthur Henderson. Now uh, uh, let's see, uh, Mike. Are you ready for this quiz? Well, as ready as I'll ever be. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you the Eclipse as well. That's a spirit. And I'm sure that loads of people are rooting for you uh, from, from your own constituencies and other people are just, um, oh, you're having a fag. I like the style <laughs> while you're doing the quiz. Right. So uh, we will start off with an, early, uh, an easy question for you both, um, which is, um, who is the longest serving Labour MP of all time? Ooh. Skinner. Do we, do we, do we guess? Did you say Skinner? I, th I did say Skinner. That's you a guess. Got it, Shinwell? You got it right. Matty Jeremy, Jeremy uh, you got that one right. So Jeremy's got one. Uh, and now we're going to ask you uh, some picture questions. These are all Labour heroes, um, but maybe not in the way you, you would think, because these are all candidates who stood for Labour in 2017 and didn't win, very narrowly didn't win, uh, mostly because they weren't given the support that they may have needed from the party. So I'm going to show you three Labour candidates from 2017. And if you could tell me who they are, um, shout out if you know the answer. Oh, don't know how. No. No. Is no. there three? No one? No. Okay. Um, oh. Has anyone got that on the chat? Somebody got it on the chat? No? Okay. Well, I'll, I'll let you know. It's Tracy Harvey. She was a candidate in Middlesbrough South and East Cleveland. I don't know what you want. Uh, this is the second candidate from 2017. No. No. The constituency no. was Pudsey. Oh, I kind of swear. I can't remember her name though. No. Jane Aitchison. Jane no. Aitchison. Yes, of course. And I am now moving on to the third Labour hero from 2017. And. It's a Norman. Norman. Yes. Oh, heroes. Another woman. <coughs> this Another is, woman, anyone, anyone get it? No. No. Candidate for Chipping Barnet. Chipping Barnet. <coughs> it's a long way from Sedgefield. Okay. Well, I'll tell you the answer. It's Emma Weishel. Oh. Uh, <coughs> got it. Camberwell, Camberwell had a, a, was nearer geographically, so could have got it. But um, I have to say, Sedgefield, you did have a Middlesbrough candidate that you may have. No, I was no. waiting for Laura Pidcock. So no, they're not. They're not as easy as that. I told you it's a tough. <laughs> so so, I'm going to so it's I'm going to Jeremy is leading by one um, question because you got Dennis Skinner. Um, here is the next round, which are um, Labour heroes from the past uh, world. These are pictures of Labour heroes um, in the past, and if you could tell me who this is. Uh, First one to get it um, gets the point. Okay, here you go. Over a castle? No. 
it said mm. that. That was maybe I should bump because uh, you might have uh, that. right era. No, Jeremy? no, what? sorry, Jenny Lee. No, very young, Jenny Lee. No one on the, no one on the chat. Can you give us a did? No, I'm not going. I'm not going to that 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 level there. Um, what we what I'll tell you is, um, you you will be kicking yourselves, both of you. Um, the answer is Betty Boothroyd. Oh. Oh. Yeah. A few got that in the chat, Crispin. Someone did. A few, yeah. Okay, well, let, well, well I'm right. Not, not there. Oh, yeah, lots in the chat. So, so far, your two brain boxes have got one question between Three. you and, and the chat box is winning. Five. Right, no, <laughs> I, is I, don't, I don't know the description right, of a brain box. I don't know where that came from. This is the next one. Who is this? Hmm. Do you want a clue? Um, yeah, is it Stafford Cripps? No, it's about the same era. Herbert Morrison? The person you're looking at doesn't look much like that when you remember them. Tony Bent? No. Herbert Morrison? No. James <laughs> Maxton? Ramsey MacDonald? <laughs> no. Um, I'll give you another clue. Imagine that person without hair Kinnock no <laughs> I'm doing that with the screen now mm. Mm. Dennis it's Healy quite, it's quite amazing that you haven't, you haven't got this one yet because uh, you, you will kick yourselves about this one I will I will stop the picture just so I can just so you can see my face as I gloat that you didn't get it I'm got Clem. the answer to that question is Clem Attlee yeah, somebody got it there. Bonnie Craven, well done. Okay, so we're, we're really, you're really not doing very well here. You've only and had Harley, no, well no, no. Done. Right. I always dropped in this. This is the this is your this is your last question. Oh, uh, good. Right, Come on. Have a picture. Give me dinner. Picture. Have a picture. Have a picture. Have a picture. Have a picture. Here we go. Who's this? When they were young. This is a young picture of someone who became a very powerful figure in the Labour Party. Um, and you're talking about looks a um, bit like Mandelson. No, it's before that time. Uh, it's it's in the Attlee government. <sighs> Ernest Bevan. Yes. <coughs> Amazing. Right, Jeremy, you've got two now. Yo, he's the winner. Well done. Right, no, he's not the winner yet. Mike, get really back on. What we have now is a special round for um for each of you about your own constituency oh, um, no. uh, and this is to show off you know where you're from so i'll start with you well, really, I tell you yeah oh, I can form more. right okay right but, uh jeremy i'll start with you in 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 camberwell and, and peckham um in which year did harriet harman win her biggest majority a biggest majority yeah oh i reckon that probably was 1997 incorrect mm. the answer was 2017. Ah. so uh, your second question um who was her predecessor in peckham the labor mp in oh, peckham before her Oh, Does anybody know on the chat? Tony Blair. Not Michael Furr. Yeah. Are you are you passing? I'm gonna pass. Somebody said Harry Lamborn, but that wasn't me, that was Anne. Harry Lamborn is right. Dave got it. Well done, Dave. Well done, Anne. So your final question of the three about your own constituency, which Tory MP stood against Harmon in nineteen eighty three? Which famous Tory MP to be? Stood against Harmon in 1983. Oh, Cameron was too young. Famous Tory MP. Um, John Major? No. John Redwood is the answer. 
Um, so, oh. right, now, um, now it's back to you. This is where you could make it all back, Mike. And <laughs> win. You can make it all back. Don't it. Two, Jeremy's got two. If you get these three right, then you, you're in with a chance of winning, okay? Um, first question. Um, which Tory candidate stood against Tony Blair and went on to become an MP elsewhere? Mm. No idea. Do I know? Don't don't give the answer, Mary. I don't know. Do I know? I wasn't <laughs> here. Mr. Auckland, then. <laughs> he, became a UKIP, he became a UKIP MP as well. Is that that might help. Oh my God! God. Yes, that, that bloke from Thanet. I'll yeah. tell you, it's Douglas Carswell. Mm. Carswell, right? That's not Okay, yeah. so here's your, here's your next question. You've got two more. So you could level with <laughs> Jeremy here. Look, he's got people texting him answers. Watch that. Oh. Uh, yeah, but, come on. Which, don't let him see come on, Paul. Peace campaigner stood against Tony Blair in 2005. Oh, I know. You're not supposed to forget this. Is it, this is the <laughs> Peace field. campaigner. Um... Bruce Kent? No, he was the um, he was the father of a soldier who died, wasn't he? Yeah, his yeah. name was Reg Keys. Mm. Yeah. Well done, Andy. 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 Now, right, well um, done. The final question uh, for you is: Which ward did Paul Howell MP represent on Durham County Council? Hicklev <laughs> uh, North. He, he, he pinched my seat. He didn't, did he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I didn't mean to say that. That was a bit of a mean question. Sorry about that. Um, well, that means that you've got one and Jeremy's got two. Um, which leads us leads us to the very final question. You could um, go through as the winner. Um, this, don't give up on this. You could go <laughs> for the winner. The final, the final question is actually, it's a music round. Um, and what I'm going to do I'm going to ask you both if you would perform a song from Cher's catalogue um, for us all to hear. And I'm going to ask people to vote for which one of you has the best performance. So, um, I mean, who would like to start? Do you have any, you have any um, music and notes on you? Music or words? Got any song titles? Any Cher song that you like. Do you want to start, Jeremy? You look like you've 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 been like in the deep end. Um, Julia, give us a cheer yeah, song. Life okay. after love. God knows how that goes. Life yeah, what, what after love. Together? Hold on, one at a time. One at a time. Do you want me to give you? A, um, do you want me to give you some? Um, time? An um, turn back time. You know that one. Turn back time. No. Give us uh, a clue. I've got you, babe. Oh, yeah, I'll do that. Do you want to start, Mike, with I've got yeah. you, babe? I've got you, babe. That's about it. Can you oh, do yeah, it? I got you, babe. I need I'll somebody be. else singing with me. I got you, babe. Can we do a duet, Mike? Yeah, come on. We'll get All right. Good points. I got you, babe. I got you, babe. I got you. I got you. I got you. I got you. I I'm got glad you got rid of that husband, Cher. He was a beating bastard. <laughs> This is a vote winner. If one of you does really well, does a little turn, does anything that it makes the audience feel really good, then you might get the vote. Go on. Try to do think, whatever you oh, can. Oh, Jordy's lost his banker. Oh, Jordy's lost his banker. Oh, Jordy's lost his banker. Doing the double rah. Ah. It, wasn't, it wasn't a share song, but it was a song. It was a song. It Jeremy, was a song. can you counter that? Yeah, I can counter that. Um, somebody who's died this week, perhaps. We are the robots. Do, 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 do. We are the robots. Do, 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 do. <laughs> okay. What about that? Florian would be proud. Right, what we're going to do now is I'm going to put the, um, the, 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 the poll out to everyone out there and see who wins, okay? But oh everyone's God. got a chance to um, answer the poll about who did the best performance of a Cher song. Now, unfortunately, none of you really did. Neither of you did, but um, <laughs> we, we might get um, 
we might get an answer to this poll. At the moment, it looks like Sedgefield slightly ahead. Um, it's very close. It's it's looking like. Ooh. That's it, Mike. Have a drink while you wait yeah. for the result. It's uh, red, Mike. That's good. Sedgefield, hold on. <laughs> I think I think the Geordie song actually did it for you there. I think <laughs> that really did it because you, what you've what you've got there is fifty three percent. And we've got 48%. Mm. So that, means that, that means that you've won um, on the back of your performance there, Mike. Oh, good. <laughs> I've won on the back of the performance. I'll flash it, So I think what I've got to do here is actually just say that I think Jeremy should win because he. Yeah, I can't see. I, can see I agree with that. Questions and. You can, Mike. You, you I agree with that. You didn't do a share song. Let's be honest about this. Yeah, you yeah, didn't no. do a share I song. Agree with <laughs> <laughs> you won on the back. Yeah, I'm going to go and get me dinner. <laughs> what was the song that you sang anyway, Mike? Well, Jordy's lost his pinker. It's a yeah, I don't know what that means, but it doesn't the sound pink, like pink marble. It he doesn't sound like a share song to me. Uh, and I think well, I yeah, to when she came to Newcastle, which she never did. It's a lie. I'm going to go get me dinner. 